Hello, everyone, and welcome to Turn the Page. And as you know, I'm your host, Janine Steffens, and I have two special guests today. I am literally jumping out of my skin. And they, if you could see that, I'm trying to pull myself back in. But of course, I am blessed for the second day in a row to announce Alana Danan on Turn the Page. And also, along with Alana, is Julia, and forgive me, but it's Balaz. Is that how you say yeah. it? Yeah, perfect. Julia Balaz, together, I saw them on Alana's show a couple weeks ago, and I just wanted to be so much part of this energy, and I invited both of them to come here on Turn the Page, and um, so you guys are all, um, you know, witnessing a, a great show here today, and we are so grateful. Hello, ladies. How are you? Hi, everyone. So nice to meet you. So nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Alana? Hi, Janine and Julia. I'm very excited to be part of this, uh, this video. So, um, yes, hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I am, I'm not going to go through with uh, my normal routine where I say everyone in the community say hello to them because I, I just want to make sure that uh, everybody is aware of Julia's information that she's putting out there. And uh, Julia, I'm just going to turn this over to you and, uh, you know, just to have you explain. Um, and Alana, you could jump in any time that you want. And I'm just going to like ask questions as we go. Nothing planned here. <laughs> Perfect. We go with the flow. <laughs> Yeah. So will I go ahead and share my screen, share my little presentation that I've prepared? You it's have access to do Share screen. Okay, can you see my screen now? No. Okay. Is that something you want me oh, to show? Oh, uh, gotcha. Okay, I see you coming up. Okay, now you can see that, yeah? I see it I down see. below. Let me add it you to the stream. There you ah, go. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Okay, great. And now you can see my first slide, yeah? Yes. Okay, perfect. I can't see myself now or hear you. If, if anything goes wrong, you'll just need to tell me because now I can only see the presentation. Is that all right? That's fine. Yes. All right. Well, thank you again so much for the invitation, dear Janine. I am new to your audience. I had a peek at your wonderful channel last night, and you're doing such a wonderful uh, job with uplifting the collective and raising consciousness. I'm so honored to be here today. So just very briefly about myself. I now identify as galactic astrology researcher and guide. Uh, due to several years digging deep in astrological charts of my many clients. While I used to do quantum healing hypnosis technique, QHHD Dolores Cannon's uh, technique for several years, and also doing Akashic Records reading, soul realignment, I had access to my clients' birth details, and I was guided to start looking at their astrological charts after their session with me. I was just curious about you know their astrology and most of all i was looking for proof about our higher selves guiding us correctly is it in alignment with what's in the destiny what's written in stars and when i started attracting more and more clients who had et connections in their lives or even in the sessions in regression hypnosis i was looking for some tangible proof that it's not just our imagination but you know can we prove that this is real so after many months of digging deep, studying these charts, I started finding synchronicities and I found plenty of proof over the few years. And um, at this point, I am sharing everything I'm learning and still constantly more and more information is coming through. And uh, I feel very fortunate that I was guided by my passion and enthusiasm to create online courses where I share this information. I suppose somehow I was prepared for this period of my life when it's growing and expanding and especially astrology, traditional astrology is becoming very popular now. Our collective is uh, more hungry to know and understand what makes us ticking and looking for clues that are more tangible. So it's really wonderful that 
it was so beautifully divinely arranged timely arranged at yes. this point so the word is spreading quite fast and i'm so grateful that i have these courses that i can just forward to people otherwise i would be just glued at the computer answering hundreds of emails people asking me to help them with their charts so there are three different astrology courses I have. One is just very basic astrology, com helping complete newbies, um, you know, slide in very nicely with easily understandable life purpose astrology, finding clues to help you navigate your life with greater ease. Then the second course, Starseeds Astrology 101, is for people who are curious about their galactic connections. And this year, I've published the Galactic Astrology Soul Reading Practitioner Certification Program because many people are coming to me uh, with same passion and interest and eager eagerness about galactic astrology. So we now have several certified practitioners and many more are now in the process of getting their certificates. So I am just beyond grateful and excited to see the community growing and we are together now taking it to the next level because we brainstorm, share ideas, validate each other. And it's just beyond what I could ever imagine a few years back when I was just in my nerdy mode, late night studying charts. So I would like to share with your audience the website we have put together to help people find quick answers when they have a feeling that they may have strong connection maybe with Arcturians or Andromedans or Pleiadians. And it's something they can actually find in their astrological charts. So if people would like to go to the website, starseedsastrology.com, and remember it's plural, starseedsastrology.com, when you put in your birth details, you can select different charts for free and find what fixed stars are aligned to your planets, either uh, or sun, moon, and other elements of astrology, what fixed stars were aligned at the time of your birth. Because we found that there is something perhaps called quantum entanglement related to our soul's journey, where when soul choose to travel from one star system to another, there needs to be some sort of geometrical alignment quantum alignment for that to happen for that to occur so we believe based on so many hundreds of charts that i've seen that at the time of your birth it is important if you're coming say from pleiades that the pleiades will be in perfect alignment with either sun moon or any of the planets in your astrological charts wow. so yeah isn't that fascinating yeah so when you go to this website and find your charts, I just want to highlight that some charts look quite uh, simple and straightforward. Like on the left side, we have pure Andromedan star seeds chart. You can just see a few um, important Andromedan alignments. And then other charts look very complex. So in case you will be one of the people that will have gazillion <laughs> alignments, like the one on the right hand side, these are just conjunct and opposite alignments. You can you know, be like, oh my God, what, is, what does this all mean? So on that same website, there is a tab called basic meaning explanation. If you just look at that, you can start kind of tuning into what it all means, but it's a journey. It'll take you on a months long journey of self-discovery and consciousness expansion and becoming much more multidimensionally aware, start tapping into past, present and future lives. It's just, it really is a transformational experience when you start looking at something like this. Okay. This is this is so fantastic. So uh, so so you've got the pure side on, on the left, what the way I'm viewing, and then the multi-galactic. That just means again that they're coming from multi multiple places. Is is that right? Yes, we are ancient. The soul is so so ancient. I have a little video here. Let me know if you can see this how some souls travel we call them wanderers they travel from star system to star system just like the races themselves spread across the milky way galaxy and colonized many different worlds i have this lovely presentation here very short this is kind of what it looks like and i see that in the charts of people as well 
Are you able to see this? Yes. I'll just play it again. So it's very much like that. Some souls that are on earth are very ancient and are, they, are, they have strong soul bonds, soul connections with several different star systems. And usually they stay within the same DNA. Like Elena, uh, Elena, Elena's book, The Gift from the Star, so beautifully explains how, say, Lyran's um, extended in their DNA and seeded humanity in many different star systems. So we can see in the chart that the soul that traveled through several star systems would primarily be hanging around star systems that are connected to either Ahel or Tal or Nor DNA. And you can see that they started in Lyra and then, for example, to Andromeda, Vega, Earth, Sirius, you know, there's kind of this lineage that continues even through soul's journeys. And then there are others that just go from many different star systems, but usually they would have alignments of certain stargates um, that enable them to do that, you know? So you can tap into many different elements of soul's journey, including what level of density or dimension that soul is coming from and then you can see it really reflected in the chart as well um, of you know what they do and equally you can also see when someone has um, a lot of alignments that we would know have um, service to self frequency like many of the orion stars for example i see that in charts of narcissists you can literally see draco and orion in stars of people that are service to self. And I have to highlight here, if uh, the viewer here will, if you have a chart that has a lot of Orion alignments, but you you know you are service to others aligned and you have this high vibe frequency, there are also many highly advanced races in Orion, right? We have Council of Five there. We have so many, so much of souls, so many souls that were part of the Orion League. So. It doesn't mean it's black and white. It's you really have to tune in intuitively to find out what is what. But uh, it's just really fascinating, and you can get lost in it and spend months and months <laughs> researching it. But it's just a stage. At some point, we get to a point where we say, "Okay, these are again just labels, and in essence, it's all about love and truth and connections and co-creation." So, but it's an important stage to go through. Any yeah. questions on that so far? Uh, no, this is just fascinating. I'm just I'm going to absorb as much as I can. Mm. So I will continue if that's okay. Yes, please. So, amazing. Thank you. So the most commonly asked questions I get when people start seeing kind of more complex charts, they're like, what does it all mean? And there are these conjunct, tri trine, sextiles, different aspects. So I just want to briefly explain to you, if you choose to look at the chart at the report that has all of the aspects in it, and you have this kind of busy looking chart, I would suggest to any newbies to just focus first on your conjunct and opposite alignments because they really are the strongest connection and more, most significant, most relevant connections where that's where you should start looking at your soul history. So then look at the history of those races that you see in your, or star systems that you see in your chart. And as you research it, always look for information that kind of stands out for you. You know, you can Google it. There's so much information about different star races. Always look for what stands out energetically, what is drawing your attention, because that's your soul telling you that this is for you. This is in resonance with your history. So you kind of always have to go intuitively about this as well and start tuning into um, all your senses to yeah. your higher self will be guiding you on that journey of self-discovery. Okay. Well, and then these, this, is yeah, fantastic. this is fantastic because this is what I channel when I'm doing my Akasha consultations with everyone. And so I must have known this at some point, right? Or else I'm channeling it. Um, Alana Danan has a beautiful book out there that please everyone, if you don't have it, um, access that book because it'll help uh, explain a lot of this too, right? It's huge. It's, it goes so perfectly together. Like all my course students have that book and it's just invaluable, really. I am, we are so deeply grateful for the information that came through. Thank you so much, Elena. Wow. Yeah. 
thank you. You you really complete what uh, what I have out. It's absolutely amazing. It validates so much, and it's you know they both kind of match. It's it's amazing when we see it in text, channel text, and then we actually see it in charts, and then when we tune into those soul stories, it's there, and it, it's just. Some, something very exciting and transformational when you experience something like that. And the amount of goosebumps is just... Yeah. <laughs> Alana, I hope that you so have exciting. enough uh, books in print because, you know, I, I said this a long time ago, and, is that, and I think you validated that this will be taught in schools, right? This yes. information needs to be... This is a new school book, right? <laughs> totally, totally. And I bet that will happen one day. I yeah. bet. We are Go totally ahead. heading that way, yeah. So, and then I just wanted to briefly mention these trines, sextiles, and squares, especially trines and sextiles would indicate very positive connections. There is a lot of uh, support coming from these star systems into your life, or perhaps these are places where you visited on missions and you learned something valuable that is actually supporting your life journey now. And if you have squares, then it's something there that is going to be challenging in your life, especially in your childhood and teenage years and early adulthood. Something, there are two uh, elements, either from the frequency from the star system and something that you're experiencing on Earth as human. There are two elements that are not really compatible, but you are guided to transcend that and find a way to merge these two. And that's where the gifts will come. So when you transcend square, issues in your life and equally also opposites, uh, um, integrating polarities, then there are great rewards coming as a result. So it's just wow. a lot of information, but everything has meaning. Our charts really are like a quantum map technology that we can, by quantum, I mean, you can go into so many different levels. Quantum, I mean, multidimensional. So it's all there. Okay, and then one more tip that I would like to give anyone starting to study their chart is uh, look at the houses of where these alignments are. In the report that you get, you, you have a column here that is that has numbers, and these are the houses, astrological houses, where you have these different alignments. So these are likely the areas of your life where these galactic energies will be activated the most. Okay, so you can simply Google 12 astro houses meaning and you'll find plenty of different articles and blogs about what each house means. And then you can kind of reflect on, okay, if I have a lot of Pleiadian alignments in my 10th house, house of public service and career, is it possible that actually I am channeling Pleiadian uh, consciousness and my very kind of positively focused, always looking ahead, you know, just as an example. Or... Um, yeah, I could go on and on and on. So it's always good to start reflecting on the areas of your life where these fixed stars alignments are active. Okay. And for example, if you would have Draco Thuban or Orion Regal in your house of relationships, it could well be, and in so many cases this was validated, that you have many narcissistic people coming from outside in like in in your relationships you are meeting actually a lot of you're dealing with Dra dracos um souls and we have plenty of them on earth at this time uh, so you know you then need to educate yourself more about their frequency their consciousness and step into self-empowerment because i'm seeing that a lot as well that we are coming here with this uh, mighty soul consciousness energy of self-empowerment we are really all stepping into sovereignty and we are um, transcending this manipulative toxic energy of these darker souls and to the point where they really will have nothing to feed on here because they are seen for what they are and their tricks and manipulation is no longer working it's like um, that uh, wizard behind a curtain, right? It's it's uh, revealed. So I'm seeing that a lot as well as a collective theme where we are st standing in our sovereignty and these toxic people are. They're not needed here anymore. Mm. We are so, done with that game, yeah. 
Yeah, finally, we conquered. Um, Alana, there is a question here that I, I'll just only interrupt a couple of times if I see one. They're asking about uh, a certain race that's not in your book. And I know you have another book coming out soon. So uh, is that going to include more of uh, these races, uh, Alana, in your next book? Or you just don't list them all, right? Great question. Well, yeah. well, I have, a, of course, I will never manage to list all the, the people there. You know, but um, the first one was only with those from this galaxy were in, in interacting with the Earth. Well, there are some from other galaxies. In my next book, I uh, I mention mention ETs who are part of the intergalactic confederation, the Speeders, um, the Fatal, and all, all of these races. So there are new ETs coming. Yes, of course, uh, I will describe. Uh, that I wasn't aware of before, and I, I've shown and I met, so uh, this is quite this one. So, yeah, more it is coming, not as much as in the, the first book, but uh, two of them, yes. Okay, thank you. So, um, we can continue on. If I see a question every now and then, I'll just politely uh, interrupt you. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, that's great to hear because we are seeing information from many other races as well i always i have so many different ones that uh, me and the fellow enthusiasts want to ask Helena about there's so many other races that are here and involved with earth and many of them are not necessarily part of the galactic federation of worlds they really are either on their individual journey or um, coming from higher dimensions where it's not really political it really is just to support the ascension process like to give a really expanded perspective on what we are seeing through studying these charts is my these my theory is that we have these multi-dimensional higher dimensional beings that are 9d and higher who are able to perceive past present and future and they foreseen, as Elena and uh, I, be I believe Alex Collier would say, they foreseen something major happening in our solar system. And at the same time, I believe either as a result of that or naturally the cycles are happening, what they also foreseen is this powerful window of transformation that our entire solar system is going through and it's influenced by external celestial bodies and there's so much cosmic stuff happening that many of our scientists are scientists are researching. So what I'm seeing is that we have, because of that, because of this huge window of mighty transformation, we have souls coming to Earth, divinely guided, divinely orchestrated by these higher dimensionals from all over the Milky Way, Milky Way galaxy or possibly even from multiverse and other galaxies and places because sometimes I see souls coming from different galaxies there's just like everyone is ushered in to be incarnated on earth at this time bringing higher awareness to ancient traumas ancient stories they are becoming consciously uh, remembered in our physical human bodies and brains at the same time, we have access to this higher awareness, higher consciousness of integration, unity, acceptance, transcendence. So we are helping to transmute these ancient conflicts, ancient, ancient traumas and painful points of our soul histories. We are bringing it into the physical, transcending it and causing a mighty ripple effect in the entire universe. It feels like an upgrade, not just it's human ascension and earth ascension. I think this is so much bigger than we could ever imagine and comprehend. It's mighty epic orchestration of something just totally mind blowing. Does it resonate? Does it make sense? Yes. It does totally definitely. Elana, totally makes sense. <laughs> Elana, please feel free to jump in anytime you want. We love to hear from you too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, I, I, I'm totally fascinated listening to Julia. It, it's amazing. We learn so much every time she, she's talking about these things, and it clicks, you know, click, 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 and then you understand something. It's uh, mind blowing. Well, I'm just ear, all ears <laughs> for the moment. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, go on. So I, I love this picture, this image. And if anyone knows who the artist is, please give credit. I have no idea where I found this image. I But this is the vision that I've received through some internal um, downloads in a very special moment. One day I'll share the whole transmission but it was very much like that, that this is so much bigger and we are so, so important, not to feed our egos, but to accept it in a most humble way and uh, really do your best to keep transmuting any pain, darkness, and keep choosing light and love, meaning you know, truth, wisdom, compassion, sovereignty, keep supporting the new earth, the higher consciousness, evolution. It's all about evolution. It's just this massive wave of evol evolution that we are experiencing and supporting. And uh, I believe it's also about upgrading the DNA really. Well, not just I believe, it's been confirmed so many times, but it's we are merging so many different DNA strands. There's, there's so much hybridization occurring on, on, on Earth at this time that I believe, my theory is that that alone also creates massive point of unity of so many different strands of different species that occupy so many different star systems and planets. We are merging everyone together. So that alone also has to have this ripple effect of an ex, you know, extra unity, connection, one big family, and like coming home to source, being one with all that is I think that's another element that we are participating in. I've never shared it with anyone. Does that resonate? That is huge. It, it, it's uh, so powerful and huge at the same time. And Eleanor, the question I would have to ask you is, was this something that we all had agreed upon at this particular time to bring what she, the information that she just uh, highlighted for us? Um, it just seems as if uh, they were waiting for us to raise our vibration and and everything for that to happen. Uh, it, it, it was probably put into place, but it was up to us to determine that. Is that is that right, us humans? Yes, yes. I mean, you know, all the, the star seeds souls who have uh, decided to incarnate now on this planet of Earth. It's not about them. It's about the people of Earth. It's about people of Earth rising and opening their awareness to the universe, to their place in the universe and becoming who they are. It's all about helping the human souls of Earth to, to find themselves. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, uh, that's all about the, the, the Earth things. They are the tre treasure. They are the, 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 the big deal, you know. The, why we all come from them, sir. Uh, Alana, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Uh, do you have the YouTube channel open or something else there, or just? Uh, yes, uh, I haven't put my microphone. I'm just uh, with the computer um, microphone. Okay. So I'm going to plug it, and then I won't hear the feedback. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, Julia, that's that's all that I have. I don't see any. We'll hold off to the questions to the end if you if everyone is okay with that. I'm asking everyone to put a cue in front of it so that I can flag it, and we'll take as many as we can as, as time is allowed. Perfect. So, one more thing I want to highlight that we come across a lot that we notice as significant in people's charts is galactic center in your chart. So currently galactic center is uh, sitting in around 27 degrees of Sagittarius plus minus three degrees. Some astrologers would even say plus minus five degrees. But if you look in your chart and uh, in our Starseeds astrology report, if you have alignment, it will show on the report. But uh, if you just look at your chart and see where you have 27 degrees of Sagittarius, which house is it in, then it's likely that that area of your life will be extra potent, extra powerful. And perhaps whenever you are engaging in activities in that area of your life, you're, you're bringing, you're able to bring your best game forward. So you, Janine, I was looking at your chart and you're such a wonderful validation of this statement, yet another proof, because your 10th house, house of public service is conjuncting galactic center. So it means that 
you your destiny was to bring cosmic uh, energies, cosmic consciousness, galactic consciousness, new earth consciousness to the to the collective. You're helping us to you're inspiring us to look that way, you know, kind of embodying this divine archetypal mother, father principles. So it's not a coincidence <laughs> that, that you are doing what you're doing. It just touched my heart like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. She's totally right. There is one more alignment that was interesting in your chart. Your moon is conjuncting Tau Seti and also your life mission, your south north nodes are trine and sextile Tau Seti, which uh, again, I find it's so fitting with the work that you're doing. And also interestingly, the career that you had before this, I find a lot of Tau Seti star seeds or people that have Tau Seti alignments in their chart, they have some kinds of job, some kind of job that is uh, to do with research or science, or you're just able to perceive complex issues and understand complex um, things. It's very kind of multi, of multi awareness. So, um, and as we know from Elena's book, Tao Seti are so involved, so passionate about helping humanity awaken from the illusion, from deception, and see the truth of where it was coming from and just stepping into our sovereign um, experience. So, I feel your yes, sister. Don't. And mm -hmm. and you also have um, the Orion Council of Five uh, with uh, opposing your midheaven. And you have a lot of Orion alignments, mainly sextiles and squares. It's actually the busiest alignment in your chart, but I don't see it as you as an Orion soul, but I see that you have had, you must have had many missions in, uh, within the Orion constellations or dealing with conflicts that are related to Orion dark races. It seems like you've been very busy in that regard and you're here. It's just another mission. Um, can I, can I get a little clarification? To that. My understanding is in Orion has not been, um, it's not friendly, right? So I'm not part of Orion, but I've been fighting for the cause. Is that what you're saying? Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I would say your your most recent soul connection and perhaps even incarnation within the human DNA of Tao Seti, like the Aramani race, I believe that would have been your most recent one. And that's what made you come to this incarnation. This is where, that's where the plan was made for this life. From this Tao Seti perspective, I totally would see you as part of the Galactic Federation of, of World somewhere on the ship with Tao Seti and uh, crew, um, connected also overseen by the Council of Five, some of the Orion, Alnitak, you have that there in, in your chart, and um, uh, Andromedans, you have many Andromedan, eight Andromedan alignments, but more as sextiles and trines, kind of the support, supportive role of perhaps the Andromedan Council, so definitely made strong soul connections there is that why I, I gravitated to alana so much <laughs> <laughs> must be like you 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 have the galactic federation of worlds alignment you're very 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 busy chart it's obvious that you're an ancient soul and a very busy uh, very busy soul experiences oh okay so I, i've done a lot so yeah i mean uh mm. for the first time i had astrology chart done i think i was 19 years old and this woman was, she she was channeling something, and I didn't understand it. Being you know the first time to go out and hear it, and she said, "I see you always looking up through the stars and communicating." And I thought, "What are you talking about?" So how far back would that have been, right, where I was able to do the communications? Mm, yeah, unconsciously, most likely. What I'm seeing is that you know these fixed star alignments they usually become activated uh, in our 30s and later it's becoming much sooner now because the whole collective you know we have so much more light uh, on earth and we have expanded uh, already so people are awakening much earlier than they used to but um yeah these things usually activate at a certain point when it's time for you to know so it was always there it was just under the veil yeah 
And uh, can I share one more very interesting alignment? This one, this race is not in Elena's book, but I do come across them every now and then. Hydra constellation and star system called Alphard. You have conjunct and opposite alignments to, to certain planets that would indicate that this is more ancient history, even before you made connections with Andromeda and the uh, Council of Five and the Galactic Federation of Worlds. Before all that happened, I believe you may have had connection to these ancient um, serpent people, semi-gods uh, called Nagas in ancient India. They have um, a lot about these Nagas uh, in their history. Buddhism would also talk about uh, Nagas and clients who I've had who had these conjunct or opposites, they had some incidents or experiences with these Nagas. So they are uh, known as serpent people. They can maintain their human shape completely or shape shift to half serpent half human or completely serpent and some of them have m multiple heads as well and Is that they would good? be known uh, they are incredibly wise and uh, they are bringing multidimensional awareness and cosmic wisdom to this earth they were of course there were some service to self ones and tricksters and all that but also many that came with um, beautiful compassionate heart and here to help so I'm not picking up the service to other swipe at all throughout your um, chart and history. So I, I see that as a positive connection. And usually it indicates through experience with many other uh, Hydra clients that there is they are able to easier access multi-dimensional realms, higher realms, and that they can tap to things that maybe someone who doesn't have that alignment, they wouldn't be able to. You know? So well, I think that, perhaps that is also influencing your psychic abilities. That would explain a lot when I'm getting, uh, I read the Akashic records and the information that I actually get, that explains a lot to me. Um, mm. So is that something that if, if it's, the, it's N-A-G-A, right? Naga is what you're saying? Yes, yes. Is that still part of me or is it just part of like where, where I had it started? I don't know much, much about it, how that yeah, works. It's it's conjuncting your Uranus in sixth house in Leo. So actually when your sixth house is house of service, how, you know, what you do one-on-one -on -one with people, especially in terms of healing work and Leo, you know, you are kind of starting to shine and share your light with us. And Uranus is, you know, breaking boundaries you, you, through your work. You help people to not be afraid of darkness because these Nagas, they, they have experienced uh, the darkest side as well. I sometimes see them as shadow workers where you know you have some light workers they they are not afraid to go into the darkest corners of human soul and it's this there is this strength um that can withstand even evil you know it, it's a very yeah. powerful connection and very supportive in your work i'd say and then you have hydra opposing your 12th house uh in through your mars and through your jupiter as well in aquarius so uh, a lot of uh, passionate an expansive energy when you're tapping into the higher realms, into the subconscious, into the um, hidden realms. So I feel that that energy is definitely working through you and unconsciously you weren't aware of it, but now perhaps that you're known, uh, told, then you can, they, they might start coming through either through meditation, you may actually see uh, some of them. They're really majestic, they're really fascinating beings. Is that in your book, Alana, where I could look it up or is that? I'll send you a link. Um, you, even if you just Google uh, serpent people, Naga uh, history on Earth, you will find some information online about them. Or uh, if you Google Hydra star seats, there are different blogs and articles about them and just see what resonates with you. And I want to highlight this for all viewers. Whenever you're researching certain star race, there is so much information out there and just remember it's always perspective and filter of whoever is channeling it it's their story it may or may not resonate with you you know they're just all different perspective of uh, the same thing so just always keep what resonates and ignore what doesn't and it doesn't mean it's true or not true it's just a perspective so thank you your heart will guide you 
okay. I actually have a I actually have a picture here, but um, I could show it. But we might do that later after your presentation. Uh, I think this is my last slide, and it was just this one with the um, code discount code. For oh. if anyone, if any of your viewers would like to check out my online courses, they can get fifteen percent discount if they type Janine fifteen code on the check at the checkout page. That was the last slide. So I'll stop sharing. Okay. Well, that, what a fantastic gift. Thank you so much for that. And uh, uh, so is that like a certain amount of time or just if they use that code, it doesn't expire? Um, it doesn't expire. It's fine. Okay. okay. Um, I just want to share my screen and see if this is what you're uh, referencing here. Yes. Yes. So there are some fabulous, yeah, there are some fabulous images of them in, you know, golden statues of these serpent people. They're highly um, uh, regarded in uh, Indian culture and in different religions. Um, and one of the clients, for example, that I had who um, had experienced them through Buddhist um, temple somewhere in Bali, he experienced the trickster one, and he also experienced his uh, spirit guy. Like this was a golden frequency Naga coming to empower him and help him through difficult time of his life. And he had Hidra conjunct, Alfred conjunct in his chart. So it was an interesting validation for him. So there are so many legends about these beings, and they are still present on Earth. They are still interacting with humans in certain cultures. So fascinating so in certain so cultures it is ancient right yes wow wow um alana do you have anything to add Yes, I um I could uh, add two uh two points um in this wonderful uh, presentation um about Orion you know when you hear about Orion um Orion has a bad name yeah <laughs> but it not everyone orion has a bad name because of a group of tall greys named nebu um they are there they are based there but orion is hundreds of star systems that we don't always see from from earth um most of them are benevolent and you know some are fighting against the nebu still well there are a lot of good people there you know in good places so um Mesa, Mesa, where Anax is from, and also um, Anilam, the, the siege of the Council of Five, you know, uh, places like that. So when you hear Orion, just calm down, you know, <laughs> because it's, it's scary because, yes, it has the Orion Grace, it's the, the, the Orion group uh, is very nefarious. You know, for that. Um, so then, oh, oh uh, about the Naga. Yes, they, they, they were the first to discover Earth uh, 200, million, 200 million years from now. Uh, and they set on, set on Earth since this time. That's why there's always um, a, a, an argument. The Naga say, it's our planet. We are here first, you know. The, but um, they were here first before the, the, the human the, the, the humans start to develop even. Well, then after there's, there's been other groups who came. But the Naga, um, many of them uh, stayed and they went underground, leaving the, the, the inner earth. And they still interact with the surface. And they're especially based around Asia and India. And uh, there's a lot of interaction. So they are, they are very complex societies like humans, you know. There are uh, elders and wise ones, very elevated spiritually but there's also a caste because it worked like caste with the reptilians a caste which is a uh, very nasty you know uh it beat people they, they, they do horrible stuff and these ones are very dangerous they, they, but it they're also naga it's the same society but different caste so um it's something yeah we need to to, to discover and talk more maybe Mm, great point. And same applies to Draco. I have met many souls that have conjunct Draco that actually have connection to these higher dimensional, 70 and higher dimensional ancient dragon beings. 
And there is nothing in, in these uh, people that is of reptile or service to self or wanting to harm, quite the opposite, are very wise and strong and protective guardians. So when you have Draco alignments, it can be one or the other. And that's what I mean. There always needs to be an intuition applied and you need to ask, you know, connect with the heart and soul to find out which element is it. So that was actually always one of my questions, Elena. Is it possible? I believe based on so many experiences that in Tuban Draco, yes, there is this uh, third, fourth, fifth density, maybe even sixth of their hive cities uh, that are very dense frequency but i is it possible that there could also be higher dimensional worlds that are way above that that they wouldn't even know about because they are such a contrast not with the seekers not with the seekers because they are uh, a very warrior like base society race. sorry for interrupting yeah. it's different race not the same race it's just the same location i mean is it possible so that one one the star system, the star system in the what we call the Draconis constellation. Yeah, that it's there possible. are worlds that are higher dimensionals that are connected. Yes, connected. That's possible. The guardian, but that, the that has nothing. Yeah, but nothing to do with the Sikars. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That that would be something totally different. Totally different. Yes. Yeah, but possible. Possible. Well, that's fantastic. I wanted to thank you so much. I was not expecting that much information um, about me. <laughs> Honestly, I, I wasn't, and I'm, I'm still in shock about it. it. It's great. I always sense I was an old soul. So uh, any chance that I knew Alana? Because I keep saying this, I knew her before. <laughs> I believe so, because uh, there are several alignments that are in her chart and also in your chart, several big stars that I, I would say so. Um, on the, with the Galactic Federation of Worlds, whatever mission you plan for here and now, you it's like you know from there, you, you know? Mm -hmm. I well, I can't so. wait to meet Alana in October. I am so excited about it. It can't come quick enough. Yeah. And right here on the screen, if anyone can see that, she's going to be in Orlando okay. with the Galactic and Spiritual Connection. If anybody's interested in attending, Alex Collier, Michael Sala, Tony Rodriguez, Danny Henderson, and many more will be there. Um, and please get her book before you go, because if you're there, are you doing autographs by any chance? Because I want. One. I no, it's not. Oh, yeah, I, 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 we will organize uh, like a, an hour uh, where I can meet people. Uh, probably that that may may happen. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how, but uh, I don't mean to put more on to... your plate. I really don't. <laughs> yeah, I know we're going to be very compartmentalized from people, and so we'll need to make a, a, a room if I do a signing book. So I, I may, I may, I may ask um, maybe uh, an hour in the schedule to do that. It's it's gonna be I think possible. Yeah, it possible. So she's not making any promises, and I put my big mouth out there. Um, so are you guys ready to take any questions? Because I got about 10 of them. Um, and I'll try to start with the beginning ones um, and uh, work our way up. So the first one, we got 11 right now. Let me put it on the screen here. Uh, question scorpius was on my chart and i see alana's picture of the race why a visit to the race and how could it be helping us here is it antares i believe scorpius has antares in it the the the, the negumac or the i don't understand the question yeah, I believe Scorpius has Antares in it, so they must yeah, yeah. Uh, see Antarian, Antarian alignment. Uh, no, normally, if I see that, it's connected actually to the higher dimensional Antarian beings. I have never really felt uh, Negumak frequency through human souls. I don't think it's even possible for that. No, soul. no, no, they can't. Uh, like, yeah. so it's the, the, no. If you look in Elena's book, there is the other race there in Antares that is um, kind of higher dimensional, beautiful beings that I believe are very active now um, in bringing in higher yes. frequencies. These ones. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Great question. Oh, the, the Antori. Oh, the Antorians. Oh, yeah. 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 
so it's if someone has them in their if someone has them in their chart normally what i see with that person is that it's easier for them to start accessing higher dimensions and multidimensional awareness uh, hold that if not yet it will come so look at what planet it is and what house is it in and see if you can start focusing on becoming creative in that area of your life and you will start actually bringing that high high frequency through and it usually helps other people when they are in your presence especially if you have conjunct antares other people can find it easier to access higher their higher self or multi you know higher dimensions because you act like a stargate this antarian star is so so huge our sun is about this big in comparison to antares is this big star it's it's mighty uh, i believe it's I a stargate hmm. very possible wow. and uh, yeah yes you spoke about that julia before in the video we we made about in antares stargate and it's very interesting did you say that um, all people coming from Antares are have a potential to be themselves portals? Did you say yes. something like that? Yeah. That's what I mean by Stargate. You become like a portal or like a Stargate, not just for yourself to start accessing past, present and future uh, aspects, but also you activate others to be able to do that. So normally Antarian starseed or person that has these conjunct alignments, especially, they would in their life also move a lot and, and meet many people because they are meant to bring these high frequencies with them, through them. Unconsciously it's happening, but they are uplifting everything around them. It's very powerful. So it's almost as if somebody is uh, going to activate others, right? With, yes. With the right vibration. Wow. Wow. Yes. Wow. Many QHHD practitioners would uh, have that alignment. I personally have a conjunct uh, Jupiter and Uranus in seventh house working with people conjuncting Antarian. I, I feel very strongly about this one. Yeah. It's targets, wow. yeah. And so equal would also be the galactic center conjunct alignments to certain planets. It's almost, it's somewhat similar manifestation in person's life. Wow. I, I love to promote. Uh, I don't know if that has anything to do with my chart, but I love to see the gifts in everybody. And I'm so excited about it. It's just part of me to just want to share it to the world, to let others know about it. And it's, it's almost as if I'm a great networker at this point in time in my life. And will it change? I'm not sure. But I also like to, to do the teachings and do the readings. Um, like my husband says, I want to do it all. <laughs> well, it's in your chart. We can see with your south north nodes how your soul was evolving. In previous lifetimes, recent lives, you were very much involved with moving the collective to the next level, uh, Aquarius. And in 12th house, but 12th house, it's, it was more behind the scenes. This, mm -hmm. And you've done it in many lives, more just kind of part of the group. And you weren't really shining. You were just helping, but you know, doing a lot of work in the background. And this time, you have to step into your Leo and uh, into sixth house you are in service more at the forefront but you are not you know starting to grow your ego uh, this way actually you are doing wonderfully by helping others to come on stage with you and you bring uh, their light out too and that's exactly what you're meant to be doing so it's really wonderful how you're naturally guided to do that yeah that's, and deep desire to be of service there's a lot of uh, pisces there 12th house first house so yeah so all thank you so much. Uh, the next question, if you're ready, it says, uh, what about those who came from galaxies? Did we do this one already? No, we haven't. Great question as well. There are many, I believe, on Earth. It really feels like a whole universe, multiverse is trying to be here at this time. And it's not something that can be necessarily tracked astrologically. And it's more something that you would need to do by going within through deep meditation or hypnosis or channeling or working with pendulum. Yeah, there, I've come across this several times. Some of the galaxies are trackable with zodiac degrees, but not all of them. So, you know, you, your heart and soul knows if you come from somewhere else. And typically when you did come from somewhere else, you are in this Milky Way galaxy for quite a while. As, so there would be alignments showing this part of your soul history. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. And the next, the next question is up. What can you tell us about the race of Antares? We just talked about it earlier. So 
this is for Elena. Elena. Yeah, Elena, excuse me. Can you make a book information on a uh, tale and how to how to That's greet our star siblings? <laughs> Well, it, it's, um, I think what's worth for the child, worth for every new people we're we going to meet, new race, it's uh, to be respectful, to be uh, in acceptance of their difference. But the difference is not only visual, it's to be the way they move, the way they behave. Uh, they may behave in a way that can offend you, but it's their way. And they, you can behave in a way that may offend them, but they, they are aware already of our, you know, uh, behavior. So they won't be offended by anything we do. But yes, respect. It's just being respectful and not trying to be too much invading the, their space and keeping our boundaries and our space. You know, that that's something is important with ETs because so, some of them, uh, you don't just go and hug them. You know, uh, you need sometimes to keep a distance. That's how they do. Uh, so that respect uh, of many things and boundaries and uh, difference. And that's the basics. <laughs> so next one is uh, either one of you can take this question. Uh, we'll be using our chakra system in 5D. Uh, Elena? Of course, of course, that's our, our energy, energetic structure. It will always be, be here in whatever frequency we are vibrating in. Okay, Elena, so this one here is uh, Scorpius, uh, I can't pronounce it, Entrez. Uh Please, if possible, what is, what is this race can teach us or help us here in one word i would say multidimensional awareness and connection to source but you elena if you want to add anything um that would be about the 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 Antoni. The Andor yeah. yes 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 what can they do for helping us a tuning into yes exactly what you said julia a tuning into higher frequencies showing us uh consciousness opening and attuning um helping us to ascend within towards the i suppose the higher density of higher frequency of our ourselves i suppose they could help teach us that i suppose one more thing that's coming to me now as a com for comparison they remind me someone of arcturian frequency but Arcturians come through more through feeling through the heart and teaching us compassion and the Antarian uh, these Andorian beings they come more through mind I feel they're more mental uh, than feeling although that would almost be a wrong statement because there is also this huge amount of love with them but I it seems to be about the awareness the multidimensional awareness the greater understanding and researching and looking searching for truth understanding universe how it works it's almost like they work in tandem but the others the Arcturians more the heart and the Antarians more the the consciousness so the the, the uh, uh, Antori are quite impressive beings because as, as I read here in my book they are ninth and eleventh density and also extra dimensional beings that means they can um, shift dimensions they can go into different dimensions just they have this natural ability uh that's uh that's very impressive they make make they remind me of the mantids the mantids can be existent in different frequencies at the time um that's quite impressive the andorians are quite fascinating people First QHH session and I connected with that consciousness. I didn't know at the time it's this, it's uh, these Ontarians. I felt myself becoming this tall, huge mantis. And it was so funny to me that I had this tiny, this very slim hand. And I just laughed at first. But then suddenly I was able to perceive the whole universe. My head disappeared and I was just able to answer anything. It was so mighty, really high level consciousness. Yeah, that's it. I believe that's what they are because it's in my chart as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. 
Okay, we've got a question from Wendy who is asking Julia directly, what does it mean when children ask for a snake as a pet? Well, it would be interesting to see in their chart if they have any hydra alignment. There might be connection with these uh, snake people, the Nagas. So have a look. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, let's see here. Could you put in your website in the private chat? Because I've seen that question pop up a couple of times, and I'll put it on the banner going across. Um, yep. I think we just answered that one there. Uh, let me see. Uh, Speedback is. Yes, uh, as I was saying to uh, Janine, I, I will try to organize a. Uh, an hour or two, if you want to bring your books, I'll sign them. <laughs> you know, do. Question. Um, okay, so Charlotte is asking uh, questions of the earth. Vibration goes up and more people wake up and we get help from off-worlders. Oh, if the, if the earth vibration goes up. Either one of you want to take that one? Go ahead. It, to me, it's happening already. So yeah, it's not yeah. a matter of if it's already happening. So I was about to say the same thing. Both are already happening. The Earth vibration it's, has already, yeah, and it'll be more and more. And more. more. Yeah, and uh, and the Earth worlders are helping us already. So yeah. <laughs> This is wonderful. Thank you, Janine. We can't hear you now. We can't hear you. If anybody wants to ask yeah. any more questions, I think I've asked most of them. There were duplicates that I had in, that I starred. If you want to please put a cue, it, it flags it for me to, to uh, address it to them. Um, there are lots of statements out here. Um, I want to say... So Go ahead. Oh, I want to say something before forgetting. Julia uh, created a um, dowsing, dowsing chart with uh, gray races. So if you, are sub you have been subject to abductions and uh, or you, that's it, you can douse and see what race is used to abduct you. Now, so that's on her website and I put a link on my website as well, on my homepage to Julia's uh, to dowsing chart, gray's dowsing chart. It's something you told me, Julia, that is very interesting and confirming the intel I have is that you haven't heard about people um, being abducted by Grace since a few years now. Well, t tell us, can you tell shortly about that, please? Oh, we don't hear you. You're muted. Yeah, it's just through it's just through the re reports of my clients, either QHHD or soul realignment, or when I started doing galactic uh, readings, and a lot of your audience, Elena, as well. Within the last year, everyone who I've met who had regular abductions throughout their life, none of them had any within the matter of last two three years. It was all prior, prior to that. There was couple that had that saw ship. Uh, and felt yearning, they felt like that's their soul family. That would have happened within the last two years, I think was the last one uh, that I've seen. Um, but the abductions as such where, you know, Grace were involved, it's been a while since I've heard of, you know, I haven't heard about any recent ones at all for a while. Yeah, that's totally confirms that's what totally confirms. I've been told that they, they, they are left, they left. And yeah. Oh, mute again. oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I've been muting myself because the feedback's coming from me. Um, so Kelly Dolan has got a statement. If you can scrape together the fee and book a session and provide the base from which you can dive much deeper, that is coupled with the recording and the links to links and resources are very helpful. Great point. Thank you so much, Kelly. Nice to see you here. I personally don't do sessions anymore. It's physically impossible for me to do that with the volume of um, work that is required to support the students of my courses. Uh, but 
if you go to my website, quantumhealingjourney.ie, go to all services, you can find already certified practitioners who studied with me and trained uh, with me in the last while. So you can book sessions with them. There are their contact details, their websites, and they are wonderful, uh, gifted soul readers and astrologers. And they are so passionate about this, equally passionate as me. And they're taking it even far beyond that I ever could. So highly recommend them. And if you wait a little, there is many more coming um, that are due to be certified that are dedicating their time to professionally support star seeds this way and they really spend hours looking at your chart tuning in going through very specific very lengthy question questionnaire to find out most relevant and important and empowering details about your soul history so it's invaluable to receive something like that it's usually recorded either if it's one-on-one -on -one, or they also do beautiful, beautiful, stunning written reports with visuals and all. They're just so talented. I'm so happy that uh, they were attracting, uh, they, they came my way. So you can go to my website and book with any of these practitioners. Yeah. Or if you are eager to learn yourself, then consider the courses and that'll take you on an amazing epic journey. <laughs> yeah. It's such a gift. Thank you. Likewise. <laughs> One thing I, I do want to mention to both of you is that what I'm seeing is, is how the uh, information that we are bringing forth and to do our work, we are also very much grounded. And I noticed that quite a bit across with a lot of people that I feel are very, I don't like using the word powerful, but are very knowledgeable about information that we need to utilize to uh, wake up, if you will. But we're, they're grounded. Is there a pattern or a reason for that that either one of you can answer? For me, I would just answer that life taught us <laughs> the importance of it yeah. because we, yeah. I personally did experience those moments when I was so high that I struggled to even speak. <laughs> and that taught me the importance of grounding every day because I'm so high. So I believe all of them would have had the same initiations. Yeah, you learned the hard way. I, I would say the same, same, same. I've, I've been, I've known moment where I was so high up as well. And uh, that really taught me that as above, so below, the, you know, the more you are able to go high, the more you need to ground. Yes. And I agree with that too. I was very high in the corporate world and I'm kind of glad I was because it kept everybody away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Um, so what, we'll take a few more questions. How are you guys doing on time? I always like to check in with you because, you know. Thank if, you. you know, Enjoying this so time. Okay. So the next one is directed to, uh, have you ever met, uh, Elena, to, to you, have you ever met any ETs with animal heads and human bodies? No, not personally, but I know of um, a race, the La'an, who are tall humanoids with feline heads, but it's not really an animal head. It's they have human heads, but the the, the top you have the the feline nose and uh, a, a wide forehead and hairy face. Um, then animal head, not as we would say animal on earth. Um, I wouldn't even call animal head. It's their head, and sometimes it doesn't look human, like we know, like us. So uh, I've met, I would say, I've met ETs with humanoid shape, body shape, but with heads that had features different from humans. So uh, I could say that. Okay, just just to let you guys, ladies, know to keep um, the um, feedback down. I'm muting you guys every now and then. Um, here's a question: If I'm a star seed, what does that make my kids? Little star seeds. <laughs> I, don't know. I believe we now have multi generations of star seeds on Earth present, and the term star seed comes through soul connections rather than DNA. However, we also have DNA connections. The, st the star DNA is very present on Earth. And fascinating, I'll actually be talking to uh, about this on a DNA um, show sometimes in July, where I go into detail about the star seed, uh, star uh, fixed stars information in astrological charts showing 
the lineage of uh, extraterrestrials in our genes. So in many on many occasions, I found that the alignments that were there were not necessarily this person's soul history, but they were connected to their mother's and father's ET lineage. So even that is in the charts. <laughs> so it's just totally mind blowing. Yeah, but I, I see that we have multi multiple generations of star seeds now. Uh, curious information about soul colors. What we have noticed is that indigo parents give birth or bring through crystal or rainbow children. You know that it's uh, you, you needed. You know that the. the frequencies becoming lighter and lighter. So if we had uh, indigos as the first wave of volunteers that Dolores would talk about in her concept, many of them would be indigos. And there are several waves of indigos that have different shades of colors for different purposes. And then once that was a, a huge chunk of toxic, dense energy within family lineages was cleared thanks to them. And unfortunately, many of them had to use alcohol and drugs to kind of numb the contrast of their soul and this physicality. But once that was done, now, now we have this wave of uh, crystal and rainbow and these beautiful, uh, bright souls coming through. Uh, so I thought that was always interesting to see. Thank you. That was really informative. That was um, some good information, especially with the various shades. Um, there's a various shades um, meaning various uh, information that they're providing. OK qualities of their uh, gifts to that they bring to earth yeah okay like greener green soul we would often see with healers they just naturally are healing everything around them because they have this green frequency uh blue indigo royal blue they would often be focused on communication and sharing the truth and being here for justice um you know there are all these different colors and they all have different meaning we have a whole lesson on that in the course <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's fascinating too. Uh, let's let's go on to the next question. What can you tell us about was it N I N L Hal? Yeah. This one is not in in Elena's book, but I do come across it a lot. We have a lot of Nihal star seeds on Earth right now. It's a uh, next to Sirius a star, like on a night sky. You have Nihal, Sirius, Orion Belt. And uh, it's I am getting all indigos, a lot of indigo souls. They all would have conjunct anyhow uh, alignment in their chart, and everything that indigo represents, you know, very intelligent, uh, cannot be part of the old system. They will always rebel against it. Uh, there are so many different uh, layers to it, but Nihal are definitely here to help uplifting the collective. And then the other one, there was I think Altair. There was a different star system. Um, Altair. That's in Elena's book, isn't it? I'm finding again yes. that there are the service to self ones, but I also found the higher dimensional out there coming through people when they have that in alignment. Uh, there are out there humans that chose service to others path as well. So it's again, it's not black and white. You have to kind of feel into it and see which one are you tapping into or connected to. So what oh, Capella, things, not what sorry, it wasn't out there. It was Capella. My apologies. So Capella is the uh the ones that were connected with ancient incas that actually brought astrology to earth what what are they called it is uh, Ramai. 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 Ramai, yes um so there may be connection usually when i see that connection in people's chart especially conjunct or opposites they have they actually some of them recall past lives in uh south america and they have connection and memories to um to Incas and Aztec and Ma Mayans. Mayans was the word I was looking for. Mayans. So, Mayans, yeah. Mayans. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I suppose it was spread all around, you know, the, this area. Um, yeah, the co big connection with the Mayans. And uh, it's very interesting, the Mayans, the ancient Mayans are, were very mm -hmm. involved with extraterrestrials. You know. It's um, fascinating all that, yeah. Um, I have a question about you were saying a specific location. Now, one of the things that I'm noticing in doing my readings in the placement of people who are coming to me that I feel are going to help raise the vibration and doing what they need to do. Did, 
was this all planned to put everybody in these particular places? I'm seeing everyone uprooting from certain places and moving. My senses of that is that we are um, balancing uh, this, this Mother Earth right now. Do you feel that is correct or? 100%, yes. Okay. There is a mighty orchestration going on. It's very, very precise. And recently, I it was validated through several sessions. I would even see the Andromedan Council a planning or uh, assisting a soul that was placed in this incarnation, they would they were sent back in the into Atlantean era just to observe, just to see and understand the frequency of what was going on there because it's related to what is happening now because it's coming full circle. So many of them were plugged into different incarnations to just learn and really understand what's going on and then enter into this incarnation and have a deeper uh, sense and understanding of what they're actually doing here. I feel very strongly that it's very much orchestrated, very precisely of who is where. And at first you feel very alone, isolated, because your light needed to come into darker environment. And now we are stepping into the age of Aquarius, We are where we are all going to be able to connect and create these powerful communities online or in person. And just the web is connecting so powerfully and everything will be uplifted. It's just... So if, if, I, if I could just add a little bit more to that thought. So I, I happen to be in a, I started out out of a huge city. Um, and then I went to a very, where I'm at right now, very remote to find myself. Now I'm feeling, okay, I'm here. I need to get back out to where there's more people, um, more water, um, that type of thing. I'm sensing that maybe not moving right away, but probably within the next year or so. Can you guys do any type of, astrology prediction like where we're at now to obviously you can but like what's going to you see coming up like in the next year with all of this or is that a different type of uh, astrology reading yeah no it, it's not you mean for you personally or for the collective for the collective yeah for the collective i would kind of just be repeating what all every single astrologer is saying that we are still going to go through quite a turmoil of a year until the end of this year still we are still in the collapsing of the old stage and slowly but surely building the new so we just have to hang in there and within two years it'll feel you know con continuously still now it feels lighter and lighter but uh, still we need to witness some okay. uh, crazy stuff yeah and just to comment on what you said there joining you personally it sounds to me like uh, divine guidance and wherever you're going to be guided to move next, it will support your expansion of your business and your global impact. Uh, there must be astrological lines where you're right now that are helping you to mature into what you came here to be and do. And uh, But it can only take you so far energetically. So you're, you're guided to move somewhere where you can just hit the hit the road Expansion. running yeah yeah and actually i do sense that coming up but i have to sometimes pull back my energy to because i'm not getting enough information at this time but thank you so much for that validation uh alana i put a in the private chat here a little message to you if you uh, could just say yes or no to that i'd appreciate it it's okay. private um so um let's see what else do we have here and Janine, when you will be moving, when you look at different locations, look at something called astrocartography. You can just Google it, astrocartography, and you can look at the world map and see the location based on your birth time, birth uh, details, and it'll tell you exactly what energies you will activate in that area of life. I shared it with Elena last time where she lives. It's really supporting her global mission impact. So yeah, and she's you'll in know a for sure. Yeah, that's the place. Mm -hmm. And I love it, Ilana, when you get out there and show us the nature and where you're at, even in the pub. I had so much fun. I felt like I was with you in that pub, that one video. I wanted to have a pint, I wanted to have a pint with you. I'm going to make more. Well, the video is outside. It's very difficult in Ireland because, okay, it rains a lot, but the wind. Yeah. <laughs> very difficult, very difficult. So um, I... I need to be uh, get equipped with special microphones that I can plug in my phone. That's yeah. I'll get there. I'll get there. Yeah. If you need any help, I'm I'm willing to help you out there. So I, I know Thank a lot you. about technology. Ooh, um, thank you. 
Julia, this, this question is for you. If you want to take it, is there any significance? This is from Mark to see regular number patterns over and over everywhere. So the 10, 10, that type of thing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. This could go in so many different directions, but normally what I always suggest go to uh, Google um, angel star angel numbers. I think Joanna is her name. She has an amazing blog where she, uh, will decode every single sequence she even multiple digits and each of them is decoded and what it means and it's always spot on it's really your higher self trying to show you uh, to give you signs to pay attention to certain choices and to certain experiences you just need to pay more attention to what is trying what is the higher self trying to tell you it's always that way yeah Oh, here's Audrey just um, verifying the information. So astro, yeah, cartography, okay, brings your own chart into the map. Okay, let's see here. Um, one more question from Kathy. What cards do you use to start? You mean tarot cards? In, in terms of the galactic astrology topic, I would uh, highly suggest galactic heritage cards oh my God. By, Lisa, by Lisa Royal Hold. It will expand your consciousness so beautifully uh, and especially helping with integration of polarity and different archetypes that are coming that we inherited from uh, these different galactic beings so if you want to start doing the galactic cards then these would be the ones i recommend okay there's another question here for uh elena if you wanna yeah. it oh, says could uh... you could you Give some input about the uh, Yal, I can't pronounce it. Yal, okay. Yael. Yael. Yael, is that how it's pronounced? Yael. They want more information on the race. I haven't come across the, this race, so I, I do not know about them. Hmm. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Um, You guys, if you could put the, the questions, um, uh, ask them with more um, information in there, because some of these are kind of vague, and I won't ask them. Um, I know I'm having a lot of feedback, and I apologize about that. I've been trying to fix it. Um, let's see here. Any more questions? Oh, come on. You guys got to have more questions. <clears throat> oh, here's one. <laughs> My part is a fortune is perfectly squared with my son. Son, am I doomed? <laughs> Carlos. Not at all. Remember, everything that is challenging in the chart is there for a reason, and it's supposed to help you evolve to something of you know greater potential towards your greater potential. So, think of a square always as two aspects in your life that are not compatible, but you are challenged to find a way to to uh, transcend that uh, experience of two forces fighting and when you find a way to make them live together you will be rewarded and everything will be nice and handy you can absolutely transform any negative aspect in your chart it's just leading you towards your evolution there are your blessings in disguise this question is not directed but if anybody wants to address it uh, go right ahead. It's from Barbara. Do you believe in gods and goddesses like Thor and the Egypt sun god? I believe there are extraterrestrial beings of different types perceived as gods. I, I believe, that. yes, um, totally share the same belief that um, Thor was an extraterrestrial and all the gods and goddesses we humans used to to adore in the, in the ancient times were extraterrestrials. Um, that's my conviction. Then there are other beliefs that are not based on extraterrestrials, but on um, concepts like earth, uh, nature forces, or uh, like, uh, you know, um, yeah, concepts. But um, that's... Okay. Um, I just want to put in a little information here. Somebody was just asking me about my readings. They're coming down to a white. Um, I'm 
I'm finishing up, finishing up my block of readings that I'm doing. There's a few slots out there. Please go to my website, uh, turn the page with Janine.social. You'll find one or two of them there, 45 minutes. I think all the 90 minutes are taken, but please look forward to my new healing, uh, energy and healing classes that will be starting in August. And I'll do those for a couple of months. And then um, we'll see. I've been evolving. My work has been evolving. And I'm just getting more information to bring to you. So if anyone wants to, uh, to know about that. There is another question here. Uh, could we have lived many world, many different worlds? I remember a life with blue scales in my hands. Uh, we lived underwater. Where could that be? I would say yes. First, uh, the first part of the question definitely. I see, you know, souls, ancient souls, living hundreds of different uh, lives in many different star systems and places. Some of them, and uh, this one particular blue scales underwater could be Mintaka, could be Sirius could be ancient earth could be could, anywhere really. could, could be anywhere could be places trillions of trillions places, places that places match the description, the description. so a lot of this a blue of this water blue. sky really does it's kind of hard to tell right we have these dreams we should be in control of our dreams we should be able to ask where are we <laughs> give me a mm. name <laughs> all right so the next one is what can you tell us about centuras the, the chart says i might connect to, be, to this system or race is it centauri a or b is it alpha centauri or hadar beta centauri wow. two different places proxima or yeah or okay. proxima yeah so much to learn it's all in elena's book have a look in the book yes <laughs> um I, I would like to probably buy a bunch of those books from you uh for my classes <laughs> well you know there's um there's a, a, a school in ireland uh where i live in Kerry who teaches this book to uh to kids Amazing. Quite amazing, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Um, if you could, I don't know what Audrey is asking here about some big reveal. Is that, Audrey, is this directed to my panel or are you guys familiar with what she's asking here? Um, just the biggest reveal about your own soul history. That's how I'm translating it in terms of the galactic um, or kind of cosmic um, connections for me. But definitely was just to realize how complex the soul history is and how many connections there are and how much there is to uncover. And for me, it's very exciting. That's how I would answer that. And that really almost at this point, I have no preferences for one race or the other. They're all equally fascinating and amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's for me. Ladies. Yeah. Um, so they had their chart done and they want to know how they can get it interpreted. And is that through you okay. or? Yeah, I believe so. So on that very website, Starseed Astrology, when you get your chart, there is another tab called meaning. So click on the meaning and and take time to read through it and look at your chart and just go back and forth, do what you can to get at least some glimpses. And if you get one clue, then follow that and research that race and see where it takes you. It, as I said, it's a journey that takes months. It, it's not something that you, know, you, you are asking to interpret ancient soul history of hundreds of different lives <laughs> in one sitting, but so start with the meaning. That's the first step. If you want to know more, either book a session with one of the practitioners on my website or any others. I believe there are hundreds of other astrologers and people who are guided from within to start looking at fixed stars. What I learned when I published the course that there are others that are on the same, um, that are kind of discovering these things because collectively we are meant to know. So just Google star seeds um, charts reading or I, I don't know but i don't know how good or I, I don't know about the others so 
uh, you can book with someone else or then start studying it yourself if you feel that's what you want to do. There is beginner's course, intermediate and advanced. Okay, there's a question here. Uh, do, you, do you, Can you tell us if our DNA will progressively be activated by the new cosmic energies coming in? Do you think we'll fully reconnect through, through our power and knowledge in the years to come? Well, there's there's nothing that is going to come and activate us. It's a personal process that is personal and everyone in their, their own time differently. So we are, we are doing it by our own expansion of consciousness. Um, I wouldn't trust anything that tells us to wait or something to activate us, you know. So, and DNA activation, we do it ourselves by changing our frequency because dna has a frequency and if we elevate our frequency to a faster rate we are going to modify our, uh, uh, everything in us and the dna as well activate it more so it's all about working on our um, consciousness you know um, raising our frequency meditation through meditation mainly you know, let's say an attitude joy. always joy, joy, joy it. love <laughs> Yes, yeah. I agree. Okay. Well, that was a great question and a great answer too, because, you know, I, I guess it, everyone is thinking that we help raise a vibration that we're going to help others, but you specifically said it's all on an individual basis, right? It's almost as if, is it like if we had an agreement that I'm here to do this, yes or no, like type of... I'm guessing because of free will, right? Well, yes. We, we, when we came here, we incarnate here, we probably uh, chose to do this work, you know, to help the humans of Earth activate. But what you say is interesting because when you radiate a higher frequency, you are going to contaminate a little bit uh, people around you and change the hologram of reality in a higher frequency, you know. But it won't, regarding to people, it would, uh, it will trigger their, uh, you know, their activation. But they will be the ones to, to have to do it, you know, because they can also fight it, you know. You're going to active to 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 radiate high, a high frequency. You walk in the street, you're going to touch everyone's aura. But uh, some people won't be ready or will not want to do it, and other people who are working on it will resonate with it and it will accelerate their activation. You know, um, that's what I would say. I'm gonna ask this question. Um, this is, how do I know if I'm raising my frequency? Well, um, you see the, the, the results. I mean, you are, fear doesn't reach you you are uh, more grounded, more calm, uh, more happy, even in the chaos, in the middle of the chaos. You, you can find peace in the middle of the chaos and you can connect to the universe and slowly, slowly find your answers within yourself, connecting to the universe. Um, that would be the symptoms. What do you think, Julia? <laughs> I absolutely agree, yes. It's, uh, it almost looks like the world looks uh, uh, pinker, but there, it's not naive, it's wisdom <laughs> as well. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And also too, you're, you're more in the knowing of, of information. That's, that's where you really know it. Um, yeah. It's, it's kind of like uh, all of a sudden you start to trust it and then you're in the knowing and then it becomes very natural for you. Um, there is one question that says, uh, do you, do you miss digging? <laughs> digging, digging, the, digging. Uh, that's yeah. for me. Mm, no, but I wasn't really, I mean, archaeological excavation, it's not really digging. It's just with a trowel, slowly, 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 and a brush. <laughs> it's very patient. Do I miss that? Um, uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes, um, um, yeah, it was a good, lovely period of my life. It was very interesting and exciting. Um, 
excuse me, I'm, I'm going to mute the, some mics here. I, I do want to let everyone know that there is a video out that I did with uh, Ellen yesterday where you were talking about when you were digging and what you found, and it was a great question. So if anybody hasn't seen it, I'm not even going to tell you what it was that was so passionate to They asked her to give two memories of when she used to do this kind of work. And uh, I will tell you the feedback I got from that, the way that you described one of them, people were sensing it so much. You brought it to the, you brought it to uh, smell a vision. <laughs> So you have to go and see that video. It's, it's, it's yesterday. I will for sure. Can't wait. Uh, let's see. Um, so we've got a little bit of time left and maybe one or two questions. Are you guys okay with that? <clears throat> what is the frequency? Uh, what frequency is RH negative? I don't know. To be honest, if I may answer that, there we cannot give a definite answer to that because I have met RH negative people that are wonderful, selfless, service to others, compassionate, healers, teachers, and then you will meet some that maybe aren't. Some are tapping to higher consciousness and are very aware of extraterrestrials. The others are very much on earth and have no clue about the other. You cannot give definite answer based on blood type. And equally, I found I was always waiting to, you know, when I have more data, I should be able to tell one or the other. But even with the fixed stars alignments, we started looking at the blood types. There is no definite answer. There's so much mixing and matching of everything that at this point, it's very unique experience. Does that resonate with you, ladies? Mm -hmm. uh, totally. Totally. Totally agree. I see Let's see. Let's see. I'm... Uh... I see a lot of uh, statements out there. Here's one. Oh, well, there was one. I if just I may, said. if I may, sorry, one interesting curiosity about the blood types. What I have noticed, and it has been confirmed several times, that RH negative <clears throat> zeros, they really have uh, no breaks in terms when they're doing work. When they engage in something that they need to do, they will do until it's finished, even though their body is already tired and exhausted and in pain they will just keep going and i believe i read somewhere that based on that they choose super soldiers uh, with that and i see it in civilians people they my husband is <laughs> has this blood type and he would just go non-stop until it's done me i'm b plus i'll if my body's telling me it's tired i'm gonna take a break like mm -hmm. you know so and i've seen that uh, with others as well <laughs> so i thought it was interesting uh let's see here. i'm gonna put your information back here so if anyone has any more questions go ahead that's a good one question i see there for for julia um, um, someone is asking yes, someone is asking. absolutely so you can ask many different questions with this chart first of all you need to always be precise to what you are connecting to. Are you connecting to the incident of the abduction or do you have a question about, do you have gray DNA within your human body? Is it within your lineage? So you need to then ask specifically first to get a yes, no. And if it's a yes, then you can ask, is that gray DNA on this chart? If you get a yes, then you dose with the chart. Does that help? I haven't come across with uh, to see grace within biological lineage, but it's just me personally. Have you, Elena? Um, no, 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 I haven't. No. Um, um, so this, this, Wendy has got a statement here that I've been hearing a lot about the uh, autistic spectrum. And my belief was that it came from, um, you know, uh, to put these kids in this, per this position, right? But there's so much more to this that, and the reason why I'm saying this is that I was a, uh, I was, I had a, what, back in the day, it was a body scan that you put on somebody and pick up their frequencies and their vibrations and all this, right? And uh, sometimes you can have a surrogate. There was a, an autistic child that I became a surrogate from and I put it on and I'll tell you what, I went to some place that I've never seen before. And that showed me where they are actually in the galaxies, if you will, of obtaining information. They have escaped from themselves. But um, 
do you think that they're going that they're sooner or later that we're going to bring them down a little bit more or is it not needed where they needed to do some work what, what are your thoughts on that it's kind of out of out of the contents of what we're talking about but i've always wondered um about this If I may, to, to me, this is extremely complex topic. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. There are so many different types of soul origins of these autistic children. They come from so many different places that are very high, uh, freq- high density. So yeah. it's really difficult to make them compatible with uh, denser human physiology. And uh, I believe collectively they have a very specific mission, but also there are many individual different reasons why they're here. So it's, it's a very complex topic. Yeah. Yes, yes, um, yes. I, I believe there's such a discrepancy, a difference between their, the place where, where they come from, what who they are as, as a soul, you know, and uh, the body, the pretty body they incarnate into. It, it doesn't, it's not the same function. It doesn't function the same. They may come from races who don't speak, you know, who don't eat, do different things. And most of them are telepathic, you know. Um, there's this lady, Mary Rodwell. Oh my God. She, she wrote a book I loved. Uh, it's, it's called, um, I have it, The New Human, The New Human by Mary Rodwell. Oh my God. People, if you're interested in this, um, this topic, read it. Uh, she speaks about that. It's very interesting. It's all testimonies of, of, uh, people. Yeah. Handling this oh, child. You and the ma- oh, yeah. Okay. There was one story of someone channeling as a surrogate this child and the message to the mother was don't teach me how to talk i came here to teach you how not to talk how to become telepathic <laughs> yeah fantastic stories yeah that's what i mean you know there is and i didn't think that you guys can answer this because it is so so broad and so many different things but um they have taught us if they the kids that came here um, and ended up with it has taught each individual parent so much across the board. But someday we're, we're all going to be able to understand this. I don't think right now is the time to do that. And uh, But there will be a lot of things that come from it. I believe that in my heart. Um, so that is everything that um, all the questions I believe I have gone through. Um, and uh, if they're saying last parting words, I, first of all, I want to say thank you so much to both of you coming here. Oh, my God. It was, again, another day of uh, what I would call like a uh, celebration, right? It's just it's just so lovely to have you. And please come back again because I know that. So tell me, they, they go to your websites, they buy your books, they put all this together. You guys are teaching everyone self-empowerment to take it and learn it themselves and find out who they are. Get aligned with uh, your higher self and um, and in the meantime, if you're struggling a little bit, you can, uh, reach out and get these classes, right? And there's a lot of avenues of information that'll be out there. And, um, I'll be teaching a lot more in the near future too. So thank you so much. And if you can, I want to mention one more time that about the, um, the galactic seminar, right? In, in Orlando, Florida, in this, in here, October 21st to the 23rd, get your tickets, get your hotel. It's for three days. And um, it's it's going to be one hell of a party. That's all that I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly will be. That's going to be amazing. And uh, yes. I'm going to meet everyone. Julia, I, I, you're not in the United States. You're in another country. Is that right? In yeah. Ireland as well. And I'm on the East Coast and Elena is on the West Coast. Yeah, in so Ireland. I, I guess we all have to go to Ireland next. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> I just have one more message that just came in that I really want to express, if I may, and that is be okay with not knowing it all. Don't let not knowing steal your peace. It's okay. It will all be revealed at the right time. Just it's all good. Be okay with not knowing. Yes. Yeah, and that's the truth. Being okay with that not knowing, it, it just means it gives you a little bit more to look forward to in your next chapters yeah. and your next journey, it's right? Journey. Yes, and it is and all, coming, all coming to um, just a beautiful thing. That's all that I can say. Thank you so much, Janine. You're so wonderful. Such an inspiration. I'm so happy that I now have another beautiful channel to look up to, look forward to beautiful videos coming up. 
It's awesome. Yes. And coming back, you have to come back too. So I definitely will welcome both of you back. Um, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you guys real soon. Bye now. Bye-bye. Much love. Bye. Much love.